Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon, streaming from Salem, Oregon. Today is the 17th of April, the year of our Lord, 2021. It is a Saturday evening, and our psalm tonight is the 40th psalm. Make sure you grab a beverage. Tonight, mine is iced tea. It's rather warm out there. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare to you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open air. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and of your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. For evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head. My heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and disappointed altogether who seek to snatch away my life. Let those who turn back and be brought to dishonor who have a desire to hurt me. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha! Aha! But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. We give thanks to you, Lord Jesus, for your bitter suffering and painful death, whereby you purchased us from the pangs of eternal death. Thanks be to you that you have sent us the word of your salvation. Preserve it with its pure and unadulterated ways. And whenever we hear or read of it, reveal yourself to us, as the Savior of our souls. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Tonight we continue with our study of St. John's Gospel, the fourth chapter. Now where we left off last night was the Samaritan woman who was by the well had gone into the town and told the people, you need to come and see this man. He told me everything about me. He spoke with such authority and they then saw Jesus approach the town, and as he approached the town, the people approached him, and of course were curious about him. Matter of fact, just before our verse tonight, which is verse 31 through uh, 38, it said, and they made their way toward him. So the people were coming to see Jesus, and this is what is said. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. 
Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do, not, do you not say, Four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop that uh, for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. So far, the text. Now notice where he's saying this. He's talking about this, this harvest. He's talking about salvation. He's talking about people coming to faith. Are they in Jerusalem? Are they in Galilee? Are they in the land of the Israelites, of the Jews? No. They're in the land of Samaria. And he's talking about a harvest that exists in Samaria. The people are coming. The people have faith. Could this be the Messiah is what they're wondering. And they're heeding his message and paying attention to his words. Does this sound like someone who doesn't care about all people? Jesus is taking care of them. Jesus is looking at them. He's not treating them as outcasts like most of the people of Israel would have done in that day. Samaritans were dogs in their eyes, but not in Jesus' eyes. Christ came once for all, that none should perish, but all might have eternal life. We think back to the gospel in a nutshell, you know, that Jesus died for the sins of the world. Jesus didn't come just for a select few. He died for all sins of all times. And he died for the Samaritan people as well as for the Israelites and the Romans and even us Americans. He died for all people once and for all. And so the people are coming to him and now he's speaking not as needing food to eat, but as the need, he hungers and thirsts that people might believe, that they desire the salvation of all people. You see, for Jesus, unlike us, Jesus knew the condition of man fully. He was going to bear it completely. We may know the condition of man, but we tend to treat it intellectually rather than spiritually or emotionally. Oh yeah, many have sinned. Not all have sinned and fallen short, but many. No, it is all. Jesus understands that each and every person without faith is condemned. But he that believes shall be saved. Belief is the important thing. And belief only comes by hearing the word. That's why Jesus desires that word to go out. How often did Jesus heal a bunch of people? And of course the next day the people went looking for Jesus, bringing all their sick, bringing all the people that had pains and problems, and Jesus was gone. His word needed to go out. He was already off to the next village. The healing brought people out. It showed that he was indeed the Messiah that Isaiah had prophesied about. But the word was his mission. To spread the word. The kingdom of God is at hand. And that kingdom of God is at hand also for you, regardless of where you are. For instance, if you're not in the United States, maybe you're someplace else. Jesus is there right now because his word is going out to you. Even if you're in the Philippines. Even if you're in Germany. Even if you're in Australia. Yes, some of the people that have contacted me are from those places. And God is with you at this very moment. Because where two or more are gathered in his name, he is present. Jesus' message is is the kingdom of God is at hand, and brothers and sisters, indeed it is right now. And his word is going out to you. And his desire is that you share that word as well. Jesus came to save all, to die for all, to rise again, that we may have life in that more abundantly. 
Not based in what we do, but what He did. That's the message. Christ died once for all, for the salvation of all. Now, not all will be saved. And the reason for that is because people will reject the gift of salvation. You can't really accept it. You can nod your head in agreement. You can acknowledge it. But it's solely God's work for you. Otherwise, it would be based upon your merits, not upon His blood and the cross. We preach Christ crucified. That's our church motto. Because the cross is the power of God to us who believe and foolishness to those who are perishing. Tonight I pray that you come to that realization that you are never alone, that Jesus is with you even until the end of the age. And may his peace always be with you even until the day you meet him face to face. That's all I have for you tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His peace. God's blessings. Have a great night in the Lord.